share the hunter's happy mood. There is not a twinge of commercialism here, but plenty of happy hunters and cameramen enjoying their lunch in the open. This is a perfect break in the marvelous weather, which has blessed this great hunting day. We have a really nice setup for the beat. It's just after lunch. We are at a, at a ravine and the beat is actually coming up from the valley. They're going to beat and push the wild boars up through the valley. To my right, I have Franz Albrecht, and hopefully he will let some <laughs> through to me. Let's see how, my, how many pair of wild boars I will pass him. A sounder of boars passes Jochen, but no proper chances arise. This hair near Jochen thinks that it's better to stay low and see what happens. Jochen can hear the boars approaching and gets ready. Although the first bullet evidently was a lethal hit on the shoulder, the boar didn't drop on the spot, so Jochen does the proper thing and shoots again. Let's see Jochen's shot again in slow motion and from a slightly different angle. Jochen places the first shot in the center of the shoulder and quickly follows up with a second shot. Both bullets hit their target, but wild boar will often show no signs of being hit at all, especially when running. Jochen constantly scans the slopes in front of him, and suddenly he hears something moving in the dry leaves. A huge wild boar comes trotting on the opposite slope. It's a monstrous kyler with very visible tusks. The kyler stops for a moment. Let's hope it didn't get the scent of Jochen. Fortunately, the boar continues in the same direction as earlier. Jochen now demonstrates that he's a seasoned hunter for driven boar. He awaits the absolutely right moment. It's a guy. Olivia has not yet had any chances in this drive, but she patiently waits without making the slightest noise. And suddenly, there is something treading in the leaves. The leading sow and a sounder of boars. The old males are usually in the rear, so now she must be ready and wait.
Way to go. Well done, Olivia. Oh my gosh, she's rolling right towards us. I think that's it. After the drive is over, Jorkin thinks back about how his Kyler arrived. Now he's going down to have a closer look at it. Er ist wirklich ein starker Keiler und man kann auch sehen, er hat schon gut Abschliff, also er ist kein junger Keiler. Man konnte das auch deutlich an dem Verhalten sehen, wo er angewechselt ist. Er ist nicht einfach durch den offenen Hang gelaufen, sondern hat sich wirklich den unwegsamsten Weg ausgesucht, um heimlich an dem Hang herzuschleichen. Hat auch zwischendurch immer verhofft, also auch ein typisches Verhalten für einen alten Keiler. Und ich bin richtig froh, dass wir ihn bekommen haben. At Francis Post. Something unusual happens. This fox doesn't have any idea how good its timing is. It's allowed to approach quite unmolested because both France's instinct and experience tells them that when the line of beaters is approaching, there is a good chance that an old Kyler will try to sneak past the line of hunters. Accordingly, France refrains from shooting. I think I would have had him. Quite extraordinary. You can hunt European brown bear on driven hunts in Romania. The country has the largest population of European bears outside Russia. You should try this. You can actually hear much better even though you look really stupid. But it works. Annually, 500 bears are harvested on license. But naturally, females and cubs are protected and may only be killed in an emergency. France has seen something behind the tree down there. Is it a Kyler or what? Regardless what it is, France is ready for action. The animal is an adult bear. This can become very exciting. Where will the bear appear on the ridge? France gets ready. Now it is a matter of seconds before the chance is there. It's a mama with two cubs. The two cubs are in front. This situation can get nasty in a split second. Female bears with cubs are often very aggressive. What an experience. What an experience. Incredible. Incredible. I heard something quite, quite a long time ago. And I wasn't sure because there's wind in the top of the trees, what it is or where it is. But then I could hear that there's something coming from down there. And I put my headphones down, and just in the bottom, I can see the silhouette of a bear. And the bear, we could hear him go, which is what they do. But the bear turned around, and it looked like she was leaving, because the wind is going down. But then the wind turned back up, and she, um, she turned and came by herself through the opening. 
and it looked like it's, she's a big bear. Like, I, I think she's a, she would be way over 400 points if you were to score her, maybe 450, maybe even higher. She has a big head, big body, beautiful female. And this is exactly what sometimes happens, I think, is that people would shoot her because they didn't see the cubs. Um, out of the corner of my eye, I could, I could see cubs coming on the right-hand side. First, I only saw two, and then there were four. And there was one almost albino cub, and there was one uh, brown cub with a white stripe on the back, and another two brown. And they come close, 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 close. And then she winded us, and instead of going back down, she just crossed us. Uh, and then she got up on her back two feet, and she was looking at us, and she was like, I mean, my heart was going boom, 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 boom. And I was just standing here. I had my gun. Um, the safety was off because these kind of situations can get very, very dangerous quickly. Um, because especially the mother bear, when she has cubs, she will, she will attack you. So she was standing there and she was really, I mean, she was just winning. She wanted to know what was going on. And she got a proper swift of us. And immediately she came and charged us. And she was only 20 meters away when she started. And she got to maybe 10, 12 meters. And I put my gun up. And the last thing that I want to do is shoot a female when she has cubs like that. I, that was the, the worst that could happen. So we, we just shouted at her as hard as we could to make her turn. At the beginning, she kept coming. And if she had come 5, 10 more meters, I would have had to shoot her, which would have been a disaster. But thank God. God, she turned and she went back into the drive. I just hope that the beaters are going to be okay. I've never had an experience like this. I mean, this is really, really amazing. And only in Romania can you have something like this in a boar drive. And how special and how amazing. I really... Wow. Wow. Francis telling his story to the other hunters, whose eyes get wider and wider. The hunters know that several humans are attacked by bears in Romania every year, and that in some years there are people being killed during these attacks. The hunt continues, and the hunters are all a bit excited by the France story. Olivia is truly enjoying her hunt in Romania. Driven wild boar hunting in shirt sleeves and a temperature nearly 20 degrees Celsius. A sounder of boars are on its way to pass Olivia at a perfect range. Olivia's guide, Christian, helps her choosing the right boar to shoot. Now she must remember that France told her about shooting when the boar enters the chosen corridor in the trees. Using her aim point and keeping both eyes open, Olivia had a full field of view and the result was very good. In order to use your chances as well as possible, you must carefully measure or estimate the distance to some distant points or trees where you can get a free line of fire. So what I've done is I've walked up and down this, uh, this path to check where in this piece of wood I would have the most open space going up to the top. And I found one space which is maybe three or four meters wide. So I can take a shot in there. You can see on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side there's a lot of trees. But there's one natural path going up. And this is what I'm looking for because I know that I'd be able to take a nice shot there. If there's more than one boar coming, I can take the first one in this path. Then maybe five or six meters to the right, there's another path going up. And 10, 20 meters to the right, there's another path going up. So I've got three shooting directions. They're either going slightly down or slightly up, which means that, for example, if they're slightly quartering down, it's not enough just to give them lead, but you have to go under them because they're moving downhill. So you're, 
line of swing should not be through it like this because you're going to shoot over the top. So you have to go down and meet them there. And that is very difficult for the brain to, to do because you're always thinking that you're going to miss it below. Uh, so it takes a bit of training in your head to make yourself shoot below the board. And the same if, it, if it's going up. If it's going up, you have to aim above it and in front of it. So swing through and above. That, they're very difficult shots. The other extremely difficult shot is when they're coming straight down on you. Uh, it looks easy because you think they're coming straight for you, and that must be easy, but it's not. Because when you look at a boar from, from the front, the head is only about this wide. So your target area is very, very small. And if they're not coming straight for you, but they're slightly quartering like this or like that, then you also have to aim a slightly left or right that position and these shots are very very tricky Jens is not even finished loading up his rifle when the first shots ring out from his neighbor now he must get ready if the boar has come this way sure enough Notice how the boar hits the boar in the shoulder and how Jens follows up. It's now only a matter of seconds before the animal rolls over dead. In slow motion, it's very evident how the first bullet hits the boar at the center of its shoulders and how the bullet hits the ground behind it after having traversed the animal. Here comes a boar quietly walking behind the branches. Francis's neighbor, Jens, has an unusual experience. In the wake of a sounder of females and piglets, a kyler appears. But instead of following the sounder, he does something unusual. Surprisingly, the Kyler 
hides under some branches and waits to see if the beaters will move in another direction. As the beaters are still getting closer, the Kylo gets up and runs off. But Jens is very ready. Jens is not only born under a lucky star, he has also practiced a lot of shooting. He's good at keeping up his concentration and attention, and to make the best of any chance. In short, he's skilled at driven hunting. Franz, too, gets a chance for a boar. Here, France is using his 300 Winchester Magnum with a comparatively heavy evolution bullet. Due to its higher velocity, the expanding bullet makes a larger wound channel through the animal, and the construction of the bullet ensures complete penetration of even the largest Kylers. I have never seen a wildsuit come with full trick, and then just down in the bush gas and trick. Det så helt øh, utroligt ud. Ja. Han dykkede lige ned, sådan, kastede sig ned i, øh, imellem grene, og så lå han dernede og trykke. Til drevet, det kom tættere og tættere på, så kunne han alligevel... 